This is the Board Game Museum in Nuance in the Forest of Dean. It's a collection of board and card games and books, some dating from 1803. There are 600 games altogether. And well, this is a Wednesday evening here in Nuance, a free and fun opportunity for people to get together and play some of these games and learn about their history. And the man behind the museum is Tony Boydell. He is very happy to show all visitors round and to share his knowledge and passion for board games. It's all run on a donation basis. It's, it's my games collection gone mad. So I'm a board game designer as a hobby. I do boring IT stuff as my regular job. So this is all hobby stuff. And over the years, when you're designing board games, you come across lots of new games, obviously, and new ways of you can play games, new mechanics and things that you can put into games. But I've been coming across lots of the older stuff and being quite fascinated by all of that. And so I've quietly been collecting bits and pieces of interest over the years. Well, it's the history, the oldest board game. Can you tell us about that? The oldest game is, that I've got here is called The Historical Pastime. And it's a history game based, and it's a spiral, and it's from 1803. And the idea is you roll a, roll a teetotum, spin a teetotum. You wouldn't use dice because dice was gambling ephemera. So you'd spin a little teetotum, a little spinner, ivory normally. And you'd move your marker from the outside towards the centre of this spiral. And along the way, there would be stops in history. So in this case, it would go from the Battle of Hastings to, to the accession of George III as king. The first person to get to the middle would be the winner of the game. And there are lots of variations of this kind of game. And it's pretty much the, kind of the only way you would play games for a long time in the, in the 19th century. Until the late 19th century, when things like tiddlywinks and, and the card game Snap and Happy Families started appearing. So the early phase of that 19th century was very much about spirituality, education. They would have been quite expensive, so they wouldn't have been for everybody. So they would have been quite niche. You have a games evening, don't you? Is it every Wednesday? Every Wednesday we have the Nuant Knights with a K. And that's for more modern board gaming, but we're trying to get lots more people. So that's, if you want to play these games, that's the time to come. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. thank you very much. And before I leave, Tony gives me a quick tour of some of the highlights of the museum. I've got a book written by, written by a gentleman called Mr. F.R.B. Whitehouse, which details all of these kinds of games. Oh, so people oh. will be familiar with games, things like the Game of Goose or the Cottage of Content. Um, and this is the sort of aggregation of all the ones that he was able to find out about. And if you look at old, bo old books about board games, they often show this kind of thing. What was the risk? A risk is the... I think this is the 60s, Risk is when it first appears, and it gets really big in the 70s, and it's, um, then it was developed. So things like games like Shogun is basically Risk, but they've added a couple of extra layers of sort of things to think about in the game. A lot of stuff in the window at the moment, which is based on TV shows of the 1970s. So almost every TV show had a board game to go with it. So there's a Crossroads Motel, On the Buses, Are You Being Served? Even programs like Superstars in the 80s. You know, that, um, most people remember some of the more, I guess it's things like Buccaneer, which is a famous game from the, the 50s. Although this, is a, this isn't an early edition. I've got an early edition over there somewhere. But, um, so Buccaneer is basically you're moving around a big ocean area, getting treasure. And lots of granddads remember Buccaneer. Your, these aren't for sale. They're for people to, to come and have a look at Look at, yeah. Well, how do you make money then? You're... Well, we take donations and we have um, the gift shop. Fantastic. So we're doing it as a kind of, we do, I have a patronage, a Patreon account. So I do get sponsorship from people around the world. So it's almost covering the costs at the moment. So this video was all filmed and edited on a mobile phone. If you would like to learn how to do this, please go to brucemedia.co.uk.